Hey everybody, welcome back to Jeff Bowl Central. Brain exploding, face rotting, corpses shuffling around trying to eat your brains. Sort of. This is Resident Evil 6. It, uh, it's not exactly like that. Uh, we'll explain on that one. I'm joined by Carrie Bowles. Hello. Ooh la la. What's that about? What's what about? Oh, you know. <laughs> You're um, on YouTube. I'm not on YouTube. I'm not on anything at all. Never. Never. It's all an illusion. We're in a simulation. We're in a simulation. Let's get to the review. Elon Musk is holding me prisoner in the bathroom. Or... So we're doing a How Much Does It Suck gaming segment on Resident Evil 6. The reason we're doing this, because uh, it is an old game, is that the brand spanking new Resident Evil 2 remake just came out today. Uh, well, the day we're recording this, anyway. Um, and I got my grubby little hands on it, and I'm playing it as we speak, and it's great. I'm having a lot of fun with it, and we're gonna we're gonna check that out next week on uh, Jeff Bull Central. So tune back in. Um, and so I thought, you know what, Eric, Carrie, and I have always kind of meant to play this game in more detail than we did originally. We barely touched it. We played a lot of Resident Evil Five. Yay! You liked Resident Evil Five, okay? I did. I mean. Let's 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 do a disclaimer and talk about how much you don't like horror games. <laughs> I don't. I'm, and not, I'm a chicken. I'm a puss. Yeah, it's not because you don't like them. It's because they scare you. Yeah. For instance, for instance, while we're on the subject, Resident Evil Seven Biohazard scared the shit out of this woman. Yeah, but I wouldn't I'm, touch it. But see, now I'm acting the, the, the tip of the man because it kind of scared me too. <laughs> that was a freakish game. It really was. And oh. So of course Resident Evil 7 was a big return to form um, for the Resident Evil series basically because this game, Resident Evil 6, is not very good. It's not horrible. You know, like, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sit here and say it's the worst game ever made, I'm not gonna sit here and say it's unplayable, because it totally is playable. And there's quite a bit that's enjoyable out of it. Um, but it's not, it's not, as they would say, a traditional Resident Evil no. game. No. It's more action-y, right? It is. It's a lot more action. It's like a run-and-gun type thing. It's yeah. a shooter. You can stomp the zombies to death. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, that's an important point. Like, you can actually, you can actually, you have kung fu moves. Imagine that in, like, Resident Evil 2, where you, like, you're shooting at, at the zombie, you run out of bullets, and you can kung fu and kill him? That totally changes the nature of the game. This comes from a period in the Resident Evil franchise um, where it's kind of the capper to a trilogy of third-person action-y type games. started with Resident Evil 4, which is an absolute classic. Resident Evil 5, which you played. I played. Yeah, it's a good game. Good. It's It's actually really good, and, uh, you know, the setting with the African stuff, even though there was a lot of kind of... That was a little bit more action-packed, too. Yeah, and, and so they kind of, they kind of um, went... They put all their chips down on the action of Resident Evil 6. But there's some other odd things about it. For instance, there's four different stories that sort of interlock... Yeah. Rather than following the perspective of like a tight focused single story like five and four did. Yeah. What do you think of that? I didn't like it. Like one, you can jump around in the chap you know, to each character. Yeah, you can pick what you can pick the stories independently, so it's not even And like, like some of the characters, I'm sorry, their weapons and stuff that they give you suck. Like one character just had brass knuckles. Brass knuckles! <laughs> That's how you stop a zombie horde. You shoot them in the head or sock them real good in the jaw. Yeah. The brass knuckles. I mean, I know he's all special because he had that stuff, but come on. Yeah. And I think the story also doesn't really allow allow to for much engagement because, you know, none of them are that long. Some are better than others. Like, Leon's story is going to be better. Chris's story is going to be better because those are mainstay Resident Evil characters. They introduce a lot of new people, but I don't ever really feel that connected to anybody. Oh. And then the assassin uh, character. Mm -hmm. Fair the player too, you don't get to do anything. Nothing. Yeah, that is a thing. There is, there is some inconsistency because there's four different stories. Sometimes they feel like they were developed by four different teams. I have to check the history on that, but that might actually be the case because Sometimes player two, like you're saying, can do can do anything that player one can do, and then in the assassin story, I forget her name, um, player two can't do anything except for shoot, 
So there's inconsistency. Inclined. Look, you just suplexed on the bottom screen. Yeah, here. that's the guy with the knuckles. And actually, let's talk about the split screen because I hate it. this is maddening split screen. It's the same exact split screen format that they had for Resident Evil 5. We hated it then. But look, if you're not playing this on a on a, a damn 65 inch television, you cannot see a thing in split screen, um, which is kind of annoying. Here's the assassin right here. Yeah. But because you can suplex like you just did back there. Because you can kick and you can punch, and, and item management is simply not a thing. And for instance, because I'm playing Resident Evil 2, I'm, I'm, I'm getting refreshed of what the basics of this series are. Saving at a typewriter, item management, yeah. mixing herbs is in here, but it doesn't work the same and it's not as hard. I don't know. Is this game even Resident Evil? I don't know. But I will say one thing. If you are a gamer who's starting to get out of the kitty games, you know, and starting with the adult games. This one's pretty good because You mean like a like a like a young adult yeah, gamer, yeah. No, cuz you know, it's not too harsh in violence and stuff like that. Well, it is. It's pretty R-rated, M-rated, but who cares? But they could dial it down, <laughs> but still like you can turn off the whole where you got to be careful with your bullets, you yeah, know, no so ammo you get, conservation. You know, so or put it on easy. So you're saying if you're like a 14, 15, 16 year old, yeah. well, not 16, 14, 15 year old kid, yeah, you're looking to graduate to the adult games. This is not a bad option. No, because you know, I think it's just really good for that age group. Okay, so I think that this game does suck. It doesn't suck as bad as some people say. To me, it's not Resident Evil. What do you think about that? I'd have to agree with that. Do you think it sucks? Yeah, I think it sucks. Okay. Uh, well, that took, that took almost eight minutes to decide that. This game sucks, everybody. Damn. Do me a favor, everybody on YouTube. <laughs> Buy Fear and Loathing in Las Cruces. This is one of my short story collections. This has got the most stuff in it. Most variety, everything from science fiction, fantasy, horror, crime fiction. <laughs> Oh my god, I overwhelmed myself. She's just shaking her head at me. Yeah, I'm... I'm wow, you can Perplexed. act. I, you oh, can act. Oh, you think I got a career? <laughs> you do. But you also got a good career in writing. Well, that's, that's what they say. I'm not... Whatever.